Hi and good morning everyone. I hope you are all having a great Friday. Um, thank you for joining me. My name is Carly Bell and I love to do machine embroidery tutorials um, the third Friday of every month here on both my YouTube channel and my Facebook page and we call it Sip and Stitch. So got my water. I already drank all my coffee. I need more coffee but I'm trying not to drink too much so just water for me today. So I hope everyone's doing good. Um, please let me know in the chat if you are live here with me, if you can hear and see me okay. Um, but I just want to say good morning to Joe and Norma and Lori and Maggie and Jennifer. Um, and let's see, Jenny and Sandy. Thanks so much for joining me today. I see Jennifer Hancock is crazy. I have a really good friend that lives in Florida that is named Jennifer Hancock. So nice. I'm so glad for you to join us this morning. Hey, Pam and Deborah. So, yay. I hope y'all are all having a great Friday. So, really excited about um, today's class. Um, we are going to be doing something that I have been wanting to get and wanting to, to use for like years. But I was like, oh, I don't need that. I kept putting it off. I don't need it. And then I went to the Impressions Expo in California in January. And if you've never been to something like that before, it was so cool. Um, I think of myself more as a hobbyist. I have a little small business that I do things like what we're going to be working on today. Um, but by no means, you know, do I have a full on running shop you know, embroidering and making things for people on a regular basis. I'm more of a teacher. Um, so this expo was definitely geared towards small businesses and had more commercial like machines. And my friends at Mighty Hoop had a big, beautiful booth um, that I got to go check out while I was there. Now I've been using Mighty Hoops for years since I got uh, my first free arm machine was the Brother Persona, and then I got my Rakoma 10 needle, which we're going to be using today. Um, I definitely heard about how good Mighty Hoops were, and I got some. However, I saw and have been like stalking their hooping station for those three years um, that I had the Mighty Hoops and was like, oh, I don't need that. I don't need that. I can just, I can figure out placement and hooping. Well, after seeing the hooping station in action at the Impressions Expo, I was like, okay, I need this. <laughs> so I finally broke down and got it. Um, so that's what we're going to be using today. And if you're not familiar with this, don't worry, I'm going to go over all of it for you. But our goal today, the tutorial is to show you how Mighty Hoops work, how the hooping station works, and so that we can embroider polo shirts with a logo and have perfect placement every time. Um, now, I, I mentioned this in, to my friends in my Facebook group and those that are on my email newsletter. This tutorial is going to be geared towards our friends that have larger machines. And what I mean is that this is the, what I'm showing you today is not compatible with a flatbed embroidery machine. So if you have a regular flatbed embroidery machine that looks like you know, a typical sewing machine that goes on a table. Um, these Mighty Hoops are not compatible with your machine. However, what will be beneficial for you today, I'm going to go over placement and how even with a flatbed machine, you can get that logo in the right spot on your shirt and how to figure that out. And I'm going to tell you about all the work that I did to make sure that I do it right. <laughs> um, because today's customer is the most pickiest customer that I ever, ever will have. And that is my husband. 
and we're making some shirts for him. And everything I do, he's looking at it. He's like, oh, you could have, that could have been a, you know, a little off center, you know, something like that. He, he's worse than me when it comes to like, um, you know, I always say we are our pickiest customer. No, my husband is my pickiest customer. <laughs> so I've put a lot of work into making sure that these shirts come out just right. And uh, he's tried them on. He's, you know, I showed him, I did some practice runs, a placement, all those good things. So I'm going to show you all the work I did beforehand to make sure I get this right. Um, so I'm just checking the chat real quick. Yay. Okay. So um, although the machine I'm using and the Mighty Hoops are for our friends that have what I call a free arm machine. Um, and that is one that's built like a multi-needle, but I have a free arm that's a single needle. These work on that as well. So if you have a brother persona or the new brother PR1X, or if you have a baby lock alliance or a baby lock capella, I think is the new uh, updated model. Those are free arm machines, but have only one needle. They All of this works on them. And then of course, if you have any kind of multi-needle machine, uh, multi, uh, Mighty Hoops makes them for just about every kind that I can see um, on their website. Uh, so no matter what manufacturer embroidery machine you have, as long as it has a free arm, they are going to make hoops that will fit your machine. So I will be using my Recoma 10 needle today because my um, design has, my design only has four colors, but because I have 13 of them to do, it is really nice that I can set everything up, put it on the machine, it will switch the colors automatically and I can be hooping another shirt while that's stitching. So as soon as that one's done, I could put a new one on. And that is the really big benefits of this whole system is efficiency. Because when you are embroidering as a business, you want to get as much done as possible in the least amount of time, right? Because time is money. And that's where this system is an investment, but is worth it because it increases your efficiency. All right, so do, do, do. All right, Norma has a good question. So um, for our friends that have a flatbed um, machine, but have what's called an embroidery riser with it, which is like a wooden little shelf that your embroidery machine can sit on, which creates like a negative space under your machine. So that if you did want to slide a shirt, and I have a whole video on this because my friend Carol used to make risers. I'm not sure if she's still taking orders or not, but um, I have a whole video on using the PE 800 or PE 770 with the wooden riser. Um, so yes, you can do that. And something else I want to mention, if you can um, maybe show me a, a show of hands, like say, uh, just put the number one in the chat. Um, if you have a flatbed machine, but are interested in a hooping station, Mighty Hoops does make a special hooping station for our flatbed machines and using the hoops with our flatbed machine. Um, if enough people are interested in that, um, I'll consider maybe ordering one of those so we can do a tutorial on it because I think that would be helpful as well. Um, so to show you what it looks like, um, this camera, yeah. So sorry, the lighting's a little dark here, but um, this is what the hooping station looks like. Now the one for the home embroidery machine, uh, the flatbed embroidery machine is kind of similar in that it's made for a shirt to go over it and it has these pegs in it, but they it comes with these special little pieces that go into the pegs and are magnets to hold your bottom hoop and your stabilizer and then you slide the shirt on and you push in your top hoop um, let me get a hoop to show you um, you push in your top hoop so that you get your your stuff on right so like this whole thing is mine is new so it's like it's tight with moving the things in and out it comes like this and it'll come with these little pieces. They'll have more pegs probably everywhere. And so it will have it to where, okay, I can set up my bottom hoop here 
put the little pegs in to hold it in place. I have the little magnets to hold the stabilizer so everything stays in place. Slide the shirt on and then use your top hoop and just push it into place. And if you notice, there's lots of numbers and, and we have letters here. So it's made like a grid system so that you keep a little notebook on the side and write, okay, for these Adidas brand polo shirts, a size large, I need my hoop to be between F, you know, and say that's number five. So F5, that's where the placement is for a size large in that shirt. And then, you know, if you figure out for medium, you need to move it over a little bit and you just keep a notebook with that. So every time you do those shirts, you know, right where to put your hoop. Um, so that is the, um, the home one that is made for flatbed machines. If there's enough interest, I'll see about getting one um, so that we can do tutorials on it. Now, this one is made for the mighty hoops, which are magnetic hoops that are super strong. And notice um, when I'm not using them, I kind of have them, see they're, they're strong, but when I store them, I store them like this. And I'm gonna show you how they go, they go together on the, um, the shirt. Now the Mighty Hoop regular hooping station, um, you can get what's called fixtures. And these are going to be specific for the Mighty Hoop that you're using. So I'm using a 5.5 inch Mighty Hoop. When you look at Mighty Hoops, the sizing may be a little different than what you're thinking in your head, because normally I think in hoops of four by four, five by seven, eight by eight. Mighty Hoop terms are different numbers, but the 5.5 inch Mighty Hoop, I treat this like it's a four by four um, hoop. I don't try to put a design in it that's larger than four by four usually. So this fixture is made specifically for this size hoop. And because it's a peg system, so you see these little pegs on, on it, you put it in the hooping station and there's a little hole here that you could see through and that's where you're gonna see your number. So I'm gonna show you all the work I did <laughs> to figure out where to put my logo. But with the shirts that I have today, they work best on a 15. So that's where I have my fixture set up. All right. So for now, let's leave that there. And I'm going to show you how to set up everything when we get to that. But now let's talk about placement. So we've talked about the hooping station. We've talked about the mighty hoops. Now let's talk about the shirt and placement. So these are the shirts. This was my first test run shirt. This is a golf shirt I got at Walmart. Um, and the uh, I just wanted to run it. Of course, I get this home and my husband's like, I don't like that shirt. So <laughs> he didn't like this one. But after he saw what I wanted to make him, he went online and he found golf shirts that he liked. So this is an Adidas brand shirt. It retails at $60. I got them on a website called golfdiscount.com for $30 a piece. So to me, these are still expensive and which makes me very nervous that I make sure I get them just right because I don't want to have to go buy another $30 shirt to replace if I mess up anything. So that's why I did a lot of test runs before I stitched on the good Adidas golf shirt. <laughs> but the research I did now, when you get the hooping station, it comes with a pamphlet and it gives you kind of a guide. So based on the size shirt and whether it's ladies or men's, it kind of tells you where, remember we talked about that number 15, I put my little circle in. That's where you see your circle is a number, but the letters are where the collar lines up at the top. And I'll show you that in a minute. So they kind of give you a, a starting point for depending on the size, where you should place your fixture and how to line up your collar to make sure everything's straight in that placement. So I looked at that, but one thing that I did to, to you know, please my customer is I went in his closet and I went and grabbed all of his polo shirts that have some sort of embroidery or logo in the upper left chest. 
and I inspected them. So these are some that he has. And what I found was that they're all larges and they all, the middle of the design was about four inches from the buttons here. So I know that that was good placement for him. With um, logos that I've seen before, you kind of want the middle of the design. You see where the edge of the collar is here? That's where you want the middle of the design to be. And then you figure out how far down you want it and how, you know, pretty much it's lining up to be about four inches from here. This was a little different than like the Mighty Hoop said I should put it on 19. But when I did that, I find it was over a little more than what I wanted. So that's why I switched to 15 um, for his shirts. So a lot of, lot of research. Now, for our friends that have flatbed machines and are not interested in, in a hooping station, there is a tool that you can get that is very helpful. And it's called an embroidery placement ruler. I actually had a follower mail this to me. Um, she had it in her stash and told me about it and asked me if I wanted it. And I was like, yeah, I'll try it out. So um, this is called an embroidery placement ruler. And you see it has lots of sizes, men's and ladies. And it also has it here. So what I did was I used this as a guide. And I put the arrow of men's large, which is here right on and I see for the ruler it's saying to push it over here but if I do that notice the center is not actually where and this is you know a shirt a Nike shirt um, that we purchased I didn't make this uh, it has it going five inches from the buttons and I didn't find any of his shirts were that far over. So that might be what the standard is for these rulers and for the hooping station. But in all the shirts in his closet, I found if I lined up the four inch mark here and the large mark at the seam at the collar, that's where I'm getting the true center of where all his shirts were. So that's what I used as a guide. And then I took his shirt that I had. I bought and did that four inches large about right here and I put a mark on the shirt then I brought it over to my hooping station and I figured out where I needed to put my uh, what you call fixture so that it gets where I want it to be for these particular shirts so as a um, kind of things just to see where we are. So I know I like the four inch over and for the men's large, it's about seven inches down from this side of the collar at the top seam. So just to give you a little roundabout, you could use a regular ruler, you know, go seven inches down and put a mark and go four inches over and put a mark and get your center mark and then use whatever hoop you have at home. But that is I think a good way to figure out placement for these upper left chest logos. Now for all of his shirts, so I'm making shirts for him and all of his friends um, that he goes golfing with. And so they'll all get the logo on this side and then I'm gonna put their names on this side and I'm gonna use the same, the same guide. I'm going to go, I can't do it like this. I think they make one that goes the other way, but I'm gonna go, four inches over and you know about seven inches down and that's where I'm gonna put the center of their name so that when it's done these two things will be nice and horizontal with one another all right any questions on placement and I have a link for this ruler um, in the description box below if they have it at sewing machines plus um, and if you use coupon code Carly Bell, you'll get, um, I think, 10% off. So I'm just going to check the chat real quick. Um, 
All right. So Casey makes a good point. She says she has the embroiderer's helper. It's been a lifesaver. Um, she actually has the hooping station, um, but use it more often since I don't know how to use the station really well. Yes. So this, I am fresh to this um, station. So I'm going to show you, you know, what I've learned so far and how I've figured out how it works best for me. Um, yay, Norma says she had her logo digitized and she's hoping to get some shirts done to wear before the applique getaway. Yay. That's going to be at the end of June, guys. It's an in-person show in Dallas, Texas. Um, when this is stitching, I'm probably going to ask y'all for some ideas of what kind of classes I should teach there. Um, what do you do if the name is too long? So that is when maybe you want to consider font and font size. So if you have a really long name, you may want to get a skinnier font, like, uh, in brilliance comes with several fonts and one of them, let me check it real quick. Um, trying to remember. Okay. One is block and one is block condensed. And uh, the condensed one allows you to put a longer name um, and where a, a block font make, you know, makes the letters a little bit wider. So that's where you're going to want to play with the font style and the font size so that you can make it work with your shirt and so that you know the name is not going from here to here also that's when you start asking people for nicknames <laughs> or short you know shortened versions of names um okay all right i'm just checking the chat any any other questions okay here we go so sandy has can you use the hooping stations for other items like tote bags. Well, let me go get it real quick. I got the uh, hooping, I, I mean, it come, I think it comes with it. Yeah, so if you get the hooping station, and I think even if you just buy the fixture, let me see if I can, no, not this one, this one, okay. So the package, and I, I, I recorded unboxing it, but I need to, um, to edit it and put it together. But the package came with this hooping station, this fixture, and this fixture. Let me see. Maybe if I put it over here, you could see it better. This fixture. So this is called the Freestyle. So it came with these legs and this white plastic arm for it to set on. And then this piece came with the fixture. Let me get it out of here. Okay, so it came with this piece. And the way it works on here is you turn it around. There's only one spot for it to go on. And now you have this where then, yes, let me find a bag. You can take a bag, get it where you want it to be, and then snap the hoop um, into place. So yes, it does also come with this, what's called a freestyle um, hooping stand, so that if you have something that's not a shirt, you could still use this five and a half inch fixture to hoop something else. So yes, this did come with it. And I got the one, you have, there's two options. It depends on what kind of machine you have, but there were two options, uh, this camera, um, where you could get, you get the hooping station and this and the hoop and a T-square and, and the freestyle piece, um, all of that. And then there was another package that came with all of what I just said and these fixtures, which slide on here, so like this piece goes here and it snaps in. Oops. I haven't been good at making things snap in. 
Okay, this piece slides here and you tighten it. Okay, and it came with, let me get it. Um, an eight by 13 hoop. Let's see, it goes in this direction. I got it upside down. Um, so that I could set up my eight by 13 hoop, slide a shirt um, or a sweatshirt over it and then do like a full design. So I got the package that came with both the five by five hoop and the, the station, the fixture for it and the eight by 13 hoop with, these are called fixtures for, for they both, so they both work on the hooping station. All right, I got a mess on my table now. <laughs> okay, let me pick some of this stuff up. Um, all right, so if y'all are good, oh wait, how does, I'm trying to pull this off and I got to unscrew it. If y'all are good with understanding placement and everything, then now we can actually get started because I know y'all, y'all know I take forever because I talk too much. No, this way. Um, all right, let me put this out of my way. Okay. So let me check. Uh, did it, did it. Um, oh, Marina says she has used that small freestyle for baby onesies. Yes, I have too. Um, so Claudia has said, can I use the hooping station on a PE 800? Okay, so if you heard me earlier, this particular setup that I'm showing you today won't work on the PE 800. However, Mighty Hoops does and Hoop Master, um, they do make a hooping station that will work with flatbed embroidery machines. And so um, after I see how much interest um, everyone watching has, I'll consider ordering one of those to do a tutorial to show how it works with a flatbed machine. But they do make um, something that will work with flatbed embroidery machines like your PE 800. All right. Norma, what is the largest Mighty Hoop that will fit the Persona, that would be the eight by nine inch one. That is this one. So the biggest hoop, um, the embroidery field for a Persona is eight by eight inches. And like I said, Mighty Hoop numbers are a little different than how we normally think of hoops. So this one's eight by nine, but the embroidery field is still eight by eight. All right. All right, hi, Eartha. Okay, so now is like, I'd love to see something that works with a flatbed. Okay, okay, y'all are pulling my leg. I'll see if I'm ordering one. <laughs> y'all know, as much as y'all tell me that um, I'm an enabler for y'all, y'all enable, enable me too, you know. <laughs> All right, um, okay. Do they only make them for brother? I have an ever sewn and the connection is different. I'll have to research the home one and see what, if there's an, a compatibility issue with the hoops for our flatbed machines. Um, I'll look into that and get back to you and let you know. As far as the free arm machines, the multi-needle machines, they are compatible with just about every manufacturer out there. The only thing that changes is the brackets. So these little silver pieces on the end and, um, they have a code on them that will tell you, you know, what machine and what size this bracket is for, because I have brother machines and I have a Recoma machine. So when I first ordered some, I didn't want to have to order a hoop for my Recoma and a hoop for my brother. So when I contacted um, them to ask them about it, they were super nice. And they said, no, you can buy just one hoop and you can order brackets for each machine and the brackets are only like 20 bucks. So all I have to do is take a screwdriver, unscrew these and then put the brackets on for the other machine. And so the same hoop will work on both. So if you have multiple machines like me that are, it might be different brands, um, you can go that route. However, if you are 
a small shop and you're trying to be as efficient as possible, you're going to want to have multiple hoops so that you can have several machines running. You can have a, an item hooped while one is stitching. You can have one already hooped and ready to go. So as soon as it's done, you could switch it out. All right. Um, so whether or not the flatbed hooping, so let's see, Christina has a good question. Will it work with the dime and brother magnetic hoops? I'll have to look into that and find out. So I'll, I'll do some more research and get back to you. Um, all right. So, okay. So let's go ahead and start working on the shirt. Now, this is the shirt we're stitching today. And basically, I did a lot of test stitching. Oh, I want to tell you about the stabilizer. I've been having the stabilizer forever and I finally used it because I don't do a lot of dry fit shirts. Everything I do is pretty much cotton and knit, but I've been having this in my stash for the day that I finally did some dry fit shirts. I've been having intentions of doing fishing shirts for my husband and my dad forever. They'll, they'll tell you <laughs> it's impossible to get me to make something for them. Um, but this is called Poly Pro Performance, and it's a specialty embroidery stabilizer made by Stay Perfect. I get it from Sewing Machines Plus, and I am very impressed with it. I've done a fishing shirt in the past when I first got my embroidery machine for my husband, and it was all puckered. Um, and that was what I was super worried about with the golf shirts. And then I remembered I had this. And I think with the, the first fishing shirt I made him, I just used a poly mesh. Um, I, I think I even tried ironing it and I think that made it worse, but it, it puckered and it's all wrinkly around. I made him a big LSU fishing shirt. So I got this since then, but hadn't played with it. And it's a little bit different. It's, I think, sturdier than a poly mesh but not as heavy as a cutaway because these shirts are really thin. I don't want a big thick cutaway behind it because when it's done, you're going to be able to see it um, and, and it's going to stand out a lot. So this is nice and thin, but not as thin as poly mesh. And it's a little bit stiffer um, than poly mesh. So that is the stabilizer I'm using. Highly recommend for any kind of dry fit or performance um, wear polyester type shirts. Um, really like it. Uh, does it feel like a starch piece of cotton? I guess so. Maybe that is what it feels like. It's a woven and uh, it's got, it's kind of like, it's got a texture to it. I don't know if you could see a little, holes or whatever, but I, I really like it. It's, I've done several shirts with it. And I was, when I got his golf shirts in the mail, I ordered them online compared to the one I got from Walmart. These are much thinner. And so then I was really worried. I'm like, Oh, should I do two layers of stabilizer? So extra and making sure my picky customer is happy. I had this dry fit Razorback shirt in my stash and it's super thin. Um, polyester dry fit material. And so I tested the design on here with just one layer of stabilizer and I found it worked well and there was no puckering and you really even can't see. It's like no show, you know, you can't, you can't see it through there. Um, I tried to cut it around the design so it doesn't poke out on the sides and I was really happy with it. So once I saw that it worked well on here, then I was like, okay, now I'll do the real golf shirt. So this is one I've done and that's one layer of stabilizer and i think it looks great and then also i already put this in the wash in the dryer so really double check that it's not puckering or anything after you wash it and dry it so really really happy with the stabilizer i have a link down below and yeah this is from sewing machines plus so you can use my coupon code carly bell um but super duper happy with it so get your shirt. Let me put all this out of the way. Um, and your stabilizer and your 
Mighty Hoops. Um, if you want to check your placement like I did with a ruler beforehand and really make sure your design is going where you want it to go, you can put a little mark on your shirt or a sticker so that when it goes through the hooping station, you could see that your sticker ends up being in the middle of the hoop when you're done. So because I'm, I've, I've figured this out with these particular shirts, I'm just gonna go move over to the hooping station. So that's this one. Okay, yeah, Sue was saying her biggest issue has been stabilizer. Try this one. I am very impressed with it. And so it's Poly Pro Performance, and there's a link down below the video. All right, so hooping station. First thing you do is you take the bottom part of the hoop. So Mighty Hoops, things to pay attention to. And sometimes I even put marks on the brackets itself. See, like this one, I have a little arrow pointing up. When it's on your machine, you see how they have a closed circle and an open? And then on this side, they have an open and a closed. When you're looking at it, closed should be on the right and open should be on the left. So I will usually put little arrows on my brackets to remind me which way to slide this in. Okay. Um, another thing with Mighty Hoops is that the warning symbol should be at the top. On the, on the top part of the hoop, the warning symbol is the part that's going towards your machine when you slide it in. Now with that, looking at the bottom hoop, they connect like this. They are very, very strong magnets. You want to keep this away from your phones, your computers, and they even have a warning label on it that if you have a pacemaker, they don't recommend that you even have these. Very strong magnets. So I try to keep them away from everything. <laughs> I try not to set them on top of my phone or my computer, but I won't be surprised if one day I do it because I'm a mess. Um, now, the bottom part of the hoop, when you turn it this way, it looks like this. So you want it to be facing like this. This is the part that actually connects here. And the tab here at the bottom, you want that facing you and facing away from the machine as you slide it in. All right, so this is gonna go in the fixture, tab side down, and it snaps in place. They have this blue piece that moves up and down. And so that's gonna snap it into place. These little black pieces are the magnets that hold your stabilizer. So let me cut a piece of stabilizer. I think this way. I like to make sure the stabilizer is gonna fit to where when I close the magnets, it's, it's actually going to, um, to catch it, right? So I think I do the bottom first, like that, and that holds it into place. And then I'll kind of tug this top corner and tug this top corner. So now this is nice and, and tight on top of your bottom hoop, the magnets holding it in place. All right, so Cherie has a question. Do I prep my stabilizer in any way? I see people pre-shrinking. I have heard that with poly mesh um, stabilizer. Where's my poly mesh? Uh, or my brand I use calls it fusible no-show, right? I like the fusible kind. It also just comes non-fusible no-show. I have heard people pre-shrinking this type of stabilizer. I have not had a problem with this brand. Um, but there have been some that I've ordered on Amazon before that after I washed and dried my shirt, it crinkled up. And so that's where they say that the stabilizer might be shrinking um, in your washer and dryer, especially depending on the heat that you're using. So if you're using warm or hot water, if you're using medium or high heat in your dryer, um, those are things that are going to promote shrinkage. You can test that by taking your your no-show or poly mesh stabilizer you have at home already. Cut two equal squares. Make sure they're the same exact size. Then throw one of them in the wash, like with your towels or something like that. Let it go through the whole wash and dry cycle. Pull it out and compare it to the one you kept 
out of the washer and dryer and see if it shrunk any. So that's a way that you can test to see if the your stabilizer you have at home is prone to shrinking. Um, yeah, so she said not that to stay perfect. She hasn't tried that yet. Yeah, so if you're going and ordering stabilizer, get the, the Poly Pro. I use a ton of the fusible no-show. And I use, I love using, they have like pre-cut sheets of stabilizer. So this one is tear away, just regular old tear away. This one is peel and stick tear away. So for sticky stabilizer. And then this is just plain medium cutaway. Um, so I love these that they come flat and pre-cut for you already. They're not in a roll. They're not tending to roll up on you while you're trying to hoop something. Um, but yeah, those are the ones I use the most. So grab, grab some different ones if you haven't tried their stabilizer before. All right, bottom hoop is in, stabilizer is in. Now we slide the shirt on. So this is when we're paying attention to where our fixture is. It's on number 15. And these are my letters at the top. This is where you're lining up your collar. Okay. So you slide the shirt through. It's gonna go over your hoop, but you see these plastic pieces, this is all above. And now you got, you got those magnets holding your stabilizer in place. You don't have to worry about it moving. And I'm going to pay attention to my collar and the line. For these shirts, I liked it on E. I liked it pulled down and on E. Then I can use this and press it down and see that it aligns with my buttons. And you also have this center alignment mark as well to make sure that everything is nice and straight. Okay, make sure everything is nice, flat, straight, once you have it where you want. And the more you do this, the quicker you're gonna get at it to where you're gonna be like pew, 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 pulling shirts on and off. Now, take your top hoop, warning side up. You see these little um, bolts on the back? Those are gonna fit in this inset they have here and here. Like that. Now, all we have to do is press and it's done. Placement is right where we want it. The stabilizer is nice and taut and the, hurt, the shirt is hooped and ready to go to the machine. See, I got my stabilizer on the back, all ready to go. So how simple and easy was that? And now every large shirt that I put on here, which I have a few of them, I'm gonna put in the same exact spot when I line them up the collar, line up the buttons, have my placard in space number 15, and they're all gonna end up being in the same spot. And then when it's time for me to put their names on the other side, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna move this to 15 over here. I'm gonna still put the collar on E, just the fixture is gonna get moved to this side, so their name will be in the right spot. So that's pretty cool that you can make that happen and work so nicely. Okay. Yeah, so Eartha says, do you have the whole hooping station? So yes, this is the whole hooping station. It comes with this flat piece here, this big piece. This is the fixture that's specific for the 5.5 inch hoop. And it came with the freestyle um, station as well and a T-square. Awesome. Okay. So now finally an embroidery machine. Okay, this is what I'm using today. This is my Recoma um, EM1010, 10 needle embroidery machine. I've been having it for over three years. Love it, works great. Um, now, something that I've been playing with my machine that I wanna tell y'all, because I had like two needles that were giving me trouble and they were aggravating me because they weren't stitching quite as nice as all the other needles. So if you have a machine and you are having issues where like some needles are working good, some needles aren't. Sorry, let me get down here. <laughs> um, I bought this on Amazon. It's called a T-O, yeah, T-O-W-A, Tawa, um, Towa. This is a um, embroidery thread tension gauge. So 
I got this and it's cool because this particular one is specific for style L bobbins. They sell them according to the style bobbin you have. So all of my free arm machines have a style L bobbin. All of my flatbed machines have a style A bobbin. Um, there are other machines like my Juki sewing machine has a style M bobbin. So make sure you get the style to work with your bobbin. Um, but you can put the whole bobbin casing in here and pull it through the tension gauge and you get a reading. So I did some research on it and I put my bobbin in here and the bobbin's supposed to read, was it 150, I think? And mine was like a smidge below. So I, I tightened it like not even like not even a quarter turn, like half of a quarter turn, um, just a smidge. And then you can also pull each of your top threads through the tension gauge. So what I did was I looked at my needles that the ones that stitched the best and I read what the tension was on them. And then I used the tension knobs at the top to adjust the couple of needles that were giving me trouble um, so that their tension read like my ones that work really well. So if you need something like this, it's on Amazon. I put a link down below. Now, because the two that were giving me trouble were my green and my orange. And now I fixed them. So now they, stick, now they do good. Um, all right. So this we've been talking about free arm all morning. This is what the free arm is, right? This is um, this allows you to hoop tubular, circular things, very small things like bags, onesies, wonderful with onesies, <laughs> small shirts, um, hard to hoop items. It allows it to fit inside, so where the bottom part of the item is hanging below the free arm. So with the shirt, we're going to go through the neck hole. The free arm is going to go through here. And we're going to slide this on. And remember my rule where the closed circle needs to be on the right and the open part needs to be on the left. I know I'm sliding it in the right direction. My warning symbol is over here towards the back of going towards the embroidery machine. And my tab that's on the bottom hoop is, is facing towards me. Now all I do is I open this up, make sure none of my shirt got caught in between the bottom of the hoop and my free arm so I don't stitch my shirt together. Uh, Cause that's the whole point of having a free arm so you don't stitch things together. <laughs> um, so just make sure everything loaded correctly. Nothing got put underneath. Um, with these shirts, I did not find a need for water soluble topper. Everything I showed you that I test stitched before I didn't use any topper. So just that one sheet of stabilizer is all you need. Now, I have all my 10 colors on the back. Each color is assigned to a needle. So like my needle number one has pink thread. Needle number two has purple and so on. So my four colors I'm using are orange, black, green, and a darker silver. Um, and those needles. So when I load my design on the machine, I have to go and tell it, hey, for step number one, I want you to use needle number four, which is my dark gray thread, because my first step is the golf clubs, um, and then so on. So it's gonna go from gray to black, to orange, to green, based on the needles I've already told the machine to use for each step. Now, this is probably gonna be the most important part of using Mighty Hoops. And this is special for if you're using Mighty Hoops, or if you're using any other kind of frames, that didn't come with your machine. You always want to trace your design. You want to make sure that when it is stitching, your needle is not gonna hit any of this blue part on accident because these hoops weren't made for your machine. My machine thinks I have like, uh, it's not all the way open. So it probably thinks it has like a five by seven hoop on it right now. Um, so it will go in this blue part section of your hoop if your design is pushed over too much or if your design is too big. So number one will always trace your designs. So on my machine, I have to lock the embroidery status. Um, and excuse me one second. Okay, lock the embroidery status. It always traces with needle number one on my machine. And I can pull the presser foot down like this and press the trace button. And now my hoop is gonna move 
and I can make sure my presser foot is nowhere near the blue plastic part of my embroidery hoop and I know it's not gonna hit it on accident. So always, always trace um, and make sure that your design is right in the middle or of your hoop or wherever you want it to be and that it's not gonna get close where the presser foot might accidentally hit this plastic part on accident. All right, and I'm just making sure my design is in the center. I think I did all that already, yep. Okay, so now I have locked it and I can just hit start and it's automatically gonna switch to needle number four and that's my dark silver. And it's gonna start stitching. And that's it. Everything looks good. So we're gonna let that stitch. And I can go check questions now. Okay, Eartha has a question. Can you order just a freestyle station to use with Mighty Hoops you want? Yes, you can. I have one of those too. That is actually what I ordered first because I was like, this is probably what I'm going to use the most because I did a lot of children's stuff. Um, I actually got the infant hooping station and the freestyle hooping station, and they're made to work with any of the Mighty Hoops except the super large ones. And it says it on their website, which ones it's not compatible with, but I used it with my eight by nine, my five by seven, my five and a half one here. Um, I've used it with all of those sizes and that works really well. Okay. All right, I don't see any other um, questions. So if you have a golfer in the family and you like the design, I was going to show you where I got it Let's see. and how I changed it up a little bit. Um, oh, I'm sorry. Patty had bad weather last night. Um, I saw one of my friends in Alabama was asking how people um, did with the weather last night. I hope y'all are all okay. <laughs> I see Joe's talking about the beep in. All right, let me see. How do I do this? I am going to switch y'all over to Embrilliance. Um, Computer's going to look crazy for a second. I also can't see the comments when I'm showing you Embrilliance. But uh, I'm in Embrilliance right now. We were talking earlier about the font with long names. When you buy Embrilliance Essentials, um, the purple blue fonts, all these, they came with it. And so this is the regular old block font. This is the condensed block font. So you see how it made it skinnier? So if I have a longer name, um, I can uh, fit more letters in a smaller amount of space with that condensed font. So just use a font that, that is similar to this, and then you could shrink it down um, because this is a font that's native to Embrilliance. Um, it allows you to resize it as much as the program will allow you and it recalculates all the stitches for you. So that was that. Okay, where are we? This, this design I got from Creative Fabrica. I was looking for something, uh, you know, that Chris and his friends would like for their golf shirts. And I knew they wanted their logo, which is this. Um, this is the name of their Mardi Gras dance crew um, that they're in. And what I did was I got the picture of their logo and I digitized this myself um, using Stitch Artists that's also made by Embrilliance. So I had this file and I had this file and I was like, I want to combine them, but I did not think this was going to fit in this circle. And so I was like, I think I'd rather just get rid of the circle. So all I did was I opened the design and I went right here because I think the circle is an applique. So they had two stitches. I just deleted those two. I just hit delete on my keyboard, delete on my keyboard. So then I was left with this. And then I took this and I copied it. Go back to this one and hit paste. And then I just moved, oops. I just moved it um, to where it looked kind of centered. 
like that. And that's how I made their design. This is the final one um, here that I'm stitching out. So if you like the golf, they have some really cute golf designs um, on Creative Fabrica. Um, if you want to go check out and then you can make your own golf shirts. Um, speaking of Embrilliance, I know I've been talking about this probably for months now, but my beginner course using Embrilliance Essentials um, is almost ready to open. <laughs> um, I've been working on it for months and it's, it's coming along and I'm really excited about it. So by the end of this month, enrollment should be open. If you are new to Embrilliance embroidery software in general, you got Embrilliance Essentials and you have no clue how to use it. Um, I'm making an online course, step-by-step -step lessons on very specific topics um, to help guide you through the whole program um, and get the most out of it. So stay tuned for that. I think I have a, what you call sign up for the wait list link down below. Um, and so all that does is it puts you on the email list. So as soon as the course opens for enrollment, because it's only going to be open for one week. Um, and these are going to be what's called my founding students. They are going to be the first, the first ones that get to go through the course. Um, I have a very special price for the first students that get to go through the course. Um, but enrollment's only going to be open for one week. And what happens when you enroll, you get that discounted price because you're the first first time student um, for that course. And you uh, immediately get access to the first three modules. The course has a total of 12 modules. I've really broken it down and tried to have everything in bite-sized pieces of information so it's easily understandable and consumable and you don't get overwhelmed. Um, but the first three modules will be available right after you get it. And then after that, every Friday, a new module will get released until we're through all 12, which I think will be at the end of May. And then in between those modules getting released, every two weeks, we'll have a live Q&A session. So once you've gone through modules, you know, one through four, we'll have a Q&A session and um, so that you can ask any questions on those modules. And then we'll release five and six and have a Q&A session. And you can ask anything, you know, that's been that we've gone through so far. Um, and, you know, any anything that you want to add or have questions about, you can ask. So really excited. It's finally coming together. <laughs> so make sure you get on that wait list if that is something you're interested in. All right. Yes, so Esther, that is the kind of stuff that I'm gonna be teaching in my Embrilliance course um, is merging designs and putting things together and taking a piece of one design and adding it to another. So lots of fun stuff that we'll be covering. And there's so much that you can do with Embrilliance Essentials. It's really, really an awesome program. Um, Paula says she can't remember if she got on it. Can you put it again? Yes, I think it will It will see that you're on it already. Um, but yeah, it doesn't hurt to, to try again just to make sure. Um, all right, Wendy. I think Wendy just got from Start to Stitch. She wants to get through that before her new machine gets here because she just got a persona. I'm so excited for her. Okay, so um, from Start to Stitch was a course I released last year, and it is a beginner machine embroidery course. So I go through everything that I wish someone would have held my hand and told me before I got an embroidery machine. <laughs> um, so we go through the parts of the machine. Um, now every machine is going to have different buttons and interfaces, but they all have things in common. So I teach you those most important features to find on your machine. I do teach it all on a brother uh, PE 800. But if you have a different machine, it doesn't matter. You're still going to have those same kinds of features like loading the design, um, you know, seeing what steps there are. Say you want to back up stitches, those kinds of things. Um, or if you have fonts on your machine, how to go through and use them. Then we have a section on uh, supplies, all about stabilizers. There's two sections on hooping. Um, all about applique. I go through all the different kinds of stitches and types of designs there are out there. All my favorite places to buy designs. We have a small module on embroidery software. So this new course is going to be totally expanded and really go into a lot more detail. Um, 
So from start to stitch is available. Um, now you can purchase it anytime you want to on my website. I think I have a link to it down below. Um, but it's great for if you just started and you want all the fundamentals to be able to use your machine confidently. Because <laughs> I know I was pulling my hair out when I first got my machine. So I know how that feels. But Wendy, I'm so excited for you. Um, okay, Claudia saying she doesn't see the links where to find them. Okay, Claudia is on Facebook. So on Facebook, there should be... Um, just some wording either above the video or below it. And it won't all be there, but there should be like a see more button that you can click and it will expand because it's like really long. It's like paragraphs of stuff I put <laughs> with each video because there's so many people have so many questions and, and you know, some people like want that golf design link. Some people want a link to the shirts I'm using or the hooping station. So all of that is going to be found there. Another great place to find everything you need is on my website, which is the Sip and Stitch homepage. Um, it can be found if you just go to carlybell.com and look in the menu at the top, there should be a Sip and Stitch button there. If you're on a phone, they have the three little stacked lines. If you click that, that expands the menu. You should see Sip and Stitch in there. But that's the page that I update every time we have a new video um, with links and, and description to everything we're doing um, in today's class. All right. Let's see. Yeah, Norma, she's saying she's on the fence about the essentials course. I think you have a good understanding of essentials. I know it's stitch artists that you are wanting to understand more. And stitch artists is something I cover in my VIP membership group, which Norma is a part of. Um, and my um, VIP Sip and Stitch Squad group, we have a Zoom class every month. So it's a private Zoom class just for members. And it's a lot more interactive. People can uh, talk to me and, <laughs> and everything and ask questions. So we do classes in there every month. And some of the classes we've done have been on Stitch Artists. And the cool thing about the membership is that no matter when you sign up, you get access to all of the previous um, classes. They're all recorded so that you can watch them. So there's a whole library, uh, three years worth of classes and tutorials on everything ranging from, you know, doing in the hoop project to how to use, I have a whole section on how to use the uh, Persona uh, embroidery machine um, and digitizing um, using Stitch Artist. So lots of good stuff in the VIP group. Okay, Kara says, do we need more than essentials with the course? No, the course is strictly gonna cover essentials. I'm gonna tell you about the other programs and Brilliance have and what the difference is between them and Essentials, but the course is covering all of, of the functions that you get with Essentials. And so the name of the course, look, I have a picture. Where is it at? Here it is. Yay. Um, it's called Embroidery Essentials. So it's a beginner course on embroidery software. All right. So that's the name of the course in my little picture I made. Oh, let me go back to the comments. Okay. Oh, Marina and Norma, they're both saying sweet things. Love the membership. So well, well worth the money. I've learned so much. So, so happy. And Norma, she loves, she's always at the Zoom classes. I could always count on Norma to, uh, to be there and tell me about all the new things she's added to her craft room. Because if y'all think I'm bad, Norma's just as bad as me. <laughs> okay. Our stuff is done stitching. Here we go. So sorry, I didn't keep the camera on here the whole time, but it, it it's it basically just it does its own thing. And that's the beautiful thing about um, multi needle machines is that you can set it and walk away. It's, it's a beautiful thing, because if you've had a flatbed machine like I had mine for what, six years before I finally upgraded, you know that you can't look away from your machine. If you look away, even if you're still sitting next to it and you turn your head, something's going to go wrong. <laughs> Ask me how I know every single time. No, not every time, but it is it happens and it happens more frequently than we would like 
to admit. Um, but this is our finished product and these hoops are very strong. So we saw how easy it was to snap them on the hooping station, but it's a whole nother story of getting them apart when you're done. So what I'm doing is if you can see the tab, this is why they have that tab right there. This blue tab, I'm putting my thumb on there. So holding, holding it down right there with my, my hands underneath it. And then I'm gonna take this part and I gotta use some, some elbow grease to pull that off. It is a very strong magnet. The first couple times I did it, I was like, geez, I'm, but now I got used to it. <laughs> and now when I'm done with my hoop, this is how I store it. I take the bottom hoop and I turn it and I store it like that. And they're nice that you can hang them on a pegboard. Um, I have little hooks that hang off the side of my stand on my embroidery machine. I hang them on there. Um, I even have drawers that they fit in. Um, so really nice. And this is how you want to store them when you're not using them. So I'm going to put that on my hook right there out the way. And now we have our shirt all done, ready to go. And the only thing we need to do before we give it to our customer is trim the stabilizer. Now, one thing I could say with Mighty Hoops, for, for those of y'all that like to use as little stabilizer as possible and, you know, save your uh, scraps, I do end up having to use a larger piece of stabilizer because I really want to make sure that it is beyond where the magnet hooks so that everything is really nice and tight. You don't want your stabilizer to be only like up and down and like not touching on the side. For these, for this project, because of the density of the fill stitch and the thinness of the shirt, I want to make sure everything's right. So it does, it is a little bit wasteful um, at the end for the stabilizer. But if you are super mindful and trying to save as much as possible, really make sure you're not accidentally cutting your shirt when you trim this. But like I can do a strip here. And I can cut a strip here. And once you've collected so many strips, you could take this to your sewing machine, put them side by side like that, and just do a zigzag stitch going down. And then you can recycle some of your leftover stabilizer pieces. Sometimes if you're using a much smaller hoop, you can fit these pieces in those hoops. Like I have some little teeny tiny um, two by two hoops and one by three, two hoops, like this would fit into those. So I end up saving all my little scraps, um, but you do wanna make sure your stabilizer goes outside of those, of the, the magnets of the hoop, just to make sure everything is nice and tight in the way it should be so that you don't have any issues of puckering or um, turn this right side up, or something not stitching right. So that is it. Now, if I wouldn't be talking to y'all, <laughs> I would go ahead and have another shirt um, on my station and have it hooped and ready. So as soon as this one was done stitching, I would put another shirt on. So those are the kinds of things that really help with this type of hoops, the hooping station, and the 10 needle machine is that you're really increasing your efficiency with a being able to do as much as you can in a limited amount of time. So if you only want to work a few hours a day, like me, you know, if you have kids and you only have so much time that you can devote to this, then you, you know, you got, you want to get the most bang for your buck. So that is where these pieces are an investment, but they are worth it because I'm already going to get most, most of my investment back with this order of golf shirts. And then my friend got a whole set of jackets that she wants people's names on um, that I'm going to use this hooping station for as well. So it's, it's going to come pretty quickly. All right. So I am just checking the chat. 
yeah, so Marina said the the stitch out and the final product is definitely worth, yeah, the extra stable. I just know that I know somebody's going to look and be like, stabilizer waste. <laughs> but you, you want to make sure it's right. You want to make sure it's right. And then if you worried about those kinds of things, save your scraps. You can stitch them together, save them for smaller hoops. Um, I know I, I save all my scraps, just like with fabric, save everything. <laughs> all right. Yay. Hi, Kim from New Hampshire. Thank you for joining us. Yes. So she brings up a great point. If you're not watching this live, um, if or if you caught it in the middle or at the end, it's always recorded. It's always available for you to watch the replay on both my YouTube channel and my Facebook page. So you can always go back and, you know, get back to where you were, rewind, fast forward, all those things, um, save it to your favorites so you can remind yourself later you know, say you get the hooping station, you want to rewatch it when you get it so you can remember how to set it up. Um, so that's the great thing about these lives is that they're all recorded so you can watch them at your convenience. Because I know the time it's hard to get a time where everybody's free. <laughs> I know all about this. So let's see. All right. Can someone please answer this question? Okay. What is the question? If I buy Alpha Tricks from Imbrilliance, will this turn Creative Fabrica fonts into BX style function. Joanne, not that I'm aware of. Now, they just did update Alpha Tricks, and I have played with the organizational features that they've added, like the font manager. But from my understanding, you have to have at least Stitch Artist Level 1, which is their digitizing software, um, in order to digitize fonts like you buy on Creative Fabrica, and we call those true type fonts. Those are fonts on your computer. Those are fonts you can use in Word documents um, that you can download off of places like Creative Fabrica. They have tons of beautiful fonts. You can open those fonts in Stitch Artist Level 1 and then assign stitches to them. Um, and you know, depending on what style you want, you can change it up. There's There's a lot of fun that you can have with it. It's not a point and click where, okay, I have this font and I'm going to type out my name and then I click a button and it turns it into threads. Sometimes it works. Sometimes the stitching is like not going in the direction you think it should or would look the best. And that's when you play with the features in Stitch Artist to get the stitches to look how you want. Um, but I will double check on that for you. But I'm going to say my first answer is no, you have to have at least Stitch Artist level one. Okay. Um, all right. Esther says, did you press fusible stabilizer in the shirt? I did not. My first go round with a fishing shirt for my husband, which is kind of the same material um, as these golf shirts, I used a fusible um, poly mesh no-show stabilizer. And it was wrinkly and um, puckered and it, and it even looked worse. Um, I think after I washed it, <laughs> and that might've been with that first stabilizer I got that shrunk a little bit. Um, that was probably before, cause that was like when I first got my machine, um, way, way back in the day, uh, before I started YouTube and all that fun stuff. But, um, no, I did not have a good experience with that. So this new poly pro performance, highly recommend, highly recommend. Now, I would have to play with it and see now the Mighty Hoops make it work nice because you know everything's nice and tight. Um, I'd have to play with it, like possibly floating it in a regular embroidery hoop or actually hooping a shirt with a regular flatbed hoop and see if it comes out the same. I could practice on this, this shirt here um, and let you know how it comes out, but highly recommend this. This shirt is super duper thin, see-through. Um, and that one layer of stabilizer was enough for this to come out good. All right. Um, Claudia, I don't think the hooping station is available at Sewing Machines Plus. I want to say some of, they do have some Mighty Hoops, but I don't think you can use my coupon code. Um, what you can do is I have a link directly to Mighty Hoop down below. If you found that box we were talking about earlier with all the info, or you go to the Sip and Stitch homepage on my website that's scrolling across the screen at the bottom there, um, I have a direct link to Mighty Hoops. 
um, and you can browse all of their size hoops, hooping stations, and then hoops specific for your machine. Um, and I do have a coupon code to get you free shipping. So if you use Carly Bell on the Mighty Hoops website, they will give you free shipping. All right. All right, Sakura, am I saying that right? Um, will I be at the Everything Embroidery Market in Biloxi? As of right now, I don't know. We're supposed to have something for Abigail School that weekend, but I'm hoping that I can get away just for a day. I'm definitely not teaching. I don't have a booth or anything like that. I didn't sign up for all of that because I knew we had a school function, but I am going to try and sneak away from a day. But it's only like an hour and a half drive to Biloxi from my house. So I will let y'all know um, if I go and y'all come find me. Um, I'll, wear, I'll wear my Sip and Stitch quad shirt so you can... Uh, so you know it's me. <laughs> but yes, if you if I do go and you see me, please come talk to me. Tell me hi. I'd love to meet all of y'all. Um, um, ooh, okay. Sharon says my link to the poly performance stabilizer says tear away. Let's go check it. Did I write the wrong one? Let me go to my website. Let me go to sip and stitch. I could show you all this so um you can see. Uh where are we at? desktop. There we go. All right. You should see my screen. So this is my website. I'm actually about to change it. I'm really excited about this new thing I got. I nerd out about things like this. But anyway, at the top, Sip and Stitch homepage. This is where you scroll and this shows our schedule. So this is today. And then the next one will be in April on the 19th. And then this is today's project embroidered logo on a golf shirt. And this is all the stuff I'm using. And I wrote poly performance stabilizer. That's it. Yeah, poly pro performance. Maybe on the, the YouTube link I put, maybe I have, I'll, I'll double check and make sure it's the right one. Oh, it does say tear away. It's not a tear away though. Yeah. No, it's not a tear away. I can't tear it. I don't know why it says that. But no, this is the right one. This is what you want. And you can choose your size. Um, I have the nine inch roll. You can get 12 or you can even get as big as 20 and they're all 10 feet, 10 yards um, long. And I think if you order over 29, you get free shipping. And then like if you add it to your bag and put in, let's see. Oh, I didn't put the size. Choose the size. Say if I want to buy a bigger one. Oh, and I already had my coupon on there. So if you go right here, have a coupon code, type in Carly Bell, apply coupon. No, we don't need any codes. Um, <laughs> you'll see, you'll get uh, an extra 10% off. Uh, there we go. Okay. Um, Marissa said, uh, sorry, she was in and out. Did I have a course on Stitch Artist? I don't have an official course on Stitch Artist, but I do teach um, Stitch Artist classes in the VIP membership group, which I, I think you're a part of, Marissa, or you were um, a while back. But yeah, in the library on the VIP membership, I can show you that. Um, so for our members, or if you become a member, uh, desktop. Here we go. Okay. So this is the sign in page. Anything you buy from me, whether you got my beginner course, I have this, uh, organizer. I need to do some more classes on this. holiday workshops. You sign in here. Um, it's going to ask me for my password. Sign in. Okay. And then you get a dashboard. Um, and depending on, you know, what you have, you click here, and this is what the membership looks like. So we have a welcome section with some information, uh, announcements like when our next classes are. These are all the past Sip and Stitch tutorials. So you see as far back as May of 21, and it tells you what each one is. And then like one was the door hanger. So if you click that, it shows you the supplies and the video replay 
of the class. And like when we talk about things in class, I'll put links to stuff. But that's how the library is set up. And then every month you get a free embroidery design download. So you click here again, all the way back till April of 21, a new embroidery design every month. You see a little preview in the box. It tells you what it is. You click it and you see a picture. This is what we made. And so this was the free design for that month. So you just click this and download the design. And this is what's gonna be helpful for Marissa, Stitch Artist Tutorials. So we have a few. I even have classes sometimes where you can submit something that you are interested in learning how to dig digitize. So send me a picture or a logo and we will have a class and I will open up your picture in Stitch Artist and show you how I would go about digitizing it. So it's really helpful to see the thought process of like, okay, this looks like this. This is how I would approach this. Um, you know, and everybody's different, but I, I, I feel like that's helpful. Um, and then we had a Stitch Artist 2, how to digitize a keychain, if, even if you only have level one, how to digitize fonts and lettering, applique, sketch designs. Um, we did a 3D uh, flower and a signature. So those are some of the classes we've had so far. And then for our friends that have a persona or alliance, and I think this would also apply to if you have a the newer models, the PR1X or the Capella. These are some tutorials I did, um, a setup training, general training. And then I believe somebody asked earlier, um, do they have multi-positionable hoops? And Durkey does make a multi-positionable frame for um, the brother and baby lock, single needle and multi-needle machines. And this is a training on how to use that. So previously, the machine only had an 8x8 eight eight embroidery field, but with this hoop, you can get up to 8x14. All right, so that's it with the membership. Let's see. Um, all right, I'm just going through the questions here. So Sue said, what would you use to stabilize a sweatshirt? I use regular cutaway. Um, for a sweatshirt. And we've done a few this past fall on Sip and Stitch, and I use Cutaway. Linda said, when is the applique getaway? It is going to be the last weekend of June. I'm definitely going to be there. I'm signed up as a teacher and a vendor to have a booth with Sewing Machines Plus. Um, and it's, let me look at the calendar. So, um, let me tell you the right dates. June 27th starts on a Thursday. They have some like VIP classes, um, but it really, the regular part starts on Friday the 28th, Saturday the 29th, and um, Sunday the 30th, it's over. And I will let y'all know when registration opens for that. I know I just got an email saying, I need you to tell me what classes you're teaching. So if you have, if you're going to the applique getaway or you just want to give me your your opinion on what you think would be good if you could go. Um, what kind of class do you think would be helpful to teach there? So they have people, um, you know, some beginners there and then, you know, more uh, people that have been embroidering a while. I think we have a whole range of, of different people that come. Um, classes usually range as well as beginner classes all the way up into it, uh, digitizing. Um, Lindsay, um, that owns Lenny Penny and Lisa Shaw from Embrilliance teach some excellent classes on digitizing um, at the getaway usually. Um, and then, you know, everything in between. So last year I taught a class on intro to applique. I did a whole class just on stabilizers, going through all the different kinds out there and what kind of projects to use them for. And I did a class on placement, figuring out placement for all different kinds of items. So I don't know if I can teach the same classes again. I don't know how that works. So I need to come up with some new ideas. Uh, okay. Um, all right, Sanella said, is Stitch Artist 3 what is needed for digitizing? They have, Stitch Artist has three levels, level one, level two, and level three. Um, and the way it works, is the more the higher the level, the more features you get. However, you don't have to get all the features if you're just starting out. If you're just starting out and you're like, 
okay, I'm on a budget. I don't even know if I want to play with this or not. Let me just get Stitch Artist level one. You get into it and you're like, oh, I like this, but I wish I had some of the features in level two. You don't have to pay for the full level two. You can buy what's called an upgrade and just pay the price difference of what you already paid for level one and what level two costs. Um, or you can just go ahead and buy level two right out the bat and you'll get all the features of level one with it. That's what I did. I bought level two first because I knew that had a feature I really wanted, which was um, importing SVG files or cut files because I had a ton of those. Um, and then later I was like, okay, now I'm ready for level three. And I just paid the upgrade price of going from two to three. Um, and then when I had three, I had everything. So you can start with one um, and play with it. I, I really like two because you get some really important um, editing features that I think are, are really, really useful that you don't have in level one. So if you had to choose and you know that you want to digitize some stuff and you know you got SVG files or cut files, vector files, go with level two first. All right. So Paula said, how much is the VIP course? The VIP course, very, very exclusive, and it costs a whopping $9 per month. <laughs> I know I've had Blaine really fuss at me. Uh, Blaine's my friend from Sewing Machines Plus, which, by the way, they're doing Quilt Fest right now. And I'm sorry if I'm dragging you away from that because this was the only Friday I could do this month. Um, and it happened to fall during Quilt, Quilt Fest. But my friend Blaine has fussed at me numerous times telling me that I need to charge more money for things. But I'm like you, I'm on a budget, so I don't want to charge for things. So it's $9 per month. With that, you get uh, the Zoom classes, um, the embroidery files every month, and access to the library. All right. Okay, I'm probably way behind on comments. Let me scroll down. Okay, no. Um, oh, I forgot to say where the applique getaway is located. In Dallas, Texas. It's always in Dallas, Texas. All right, and we're, trying to, we're gonna try to maybe make a family trip out of it. I think I'm definitely gonna bring Abigail this year. We'll see if the whole family comes or just Abigail. Um, what stabilizer do I use for baby onesies? My go-to stabilizer for baby onesies is that fusible, no-show poly mesh. And then depending on the quality of the onesie, like if it's the cheap, thin Gerber ones from Walmart, I will use maybe two layers of poly mesh. Um, if it's the more quality AJ Blanks, Blanks Boutique, thicker onesies, I'll use uh, one layer of poly mesh and one layer of tear away. But I like everything fusible. Now, if I'm using Mighty Hoops, I don't have to, to do that as much. Um, but I like the fusible on the stretchy fabrics because it keeps them from distorting and stretching out while it's stitching. Um, but that's my my usual go-to is poly mesh and tear away together. And I like the fusibles. Um, all right. Have a great day, Wendy. Um, Norma said they have a commercial. I keep get I keep, I guess, getting a commercial. Never had that before in a lot. I don't know about that. Okay. I will look into that normal. We don't need commercials. Um, I'm so sorry. Okay. Oh, geez. Um, why do I have ads popping up? No. Okay. I must have messed up either that or YouTube changed something in the settings. I will go fix that. Um, and that said she was with a nice tax lady. I'd rather be here. I need to do my taxes <laughs> so bad. <laughs> I keep putting it off because I'm terrible at, at bookkeeping. Terrible. I pretty much wait and do go through my bank account and figure out everything the following year. <laughs> I'm supposed to do it every month and I don't. Okay. Joe says she doesn't have any ads, so I don't know what's going. All right. Okay. Yay, Claudia. I'm glad you're liking it. Okay. So sorry if you're getting ads. I will look into that so that doesn't happen again. Um, but that's it for today, guys. I think we've covered everything I wanted to talk about. We got our hooping station, Mighty Hoops. Y'all saw the Racoma in action. Um, I, I 
I really am glad I finally bought one of these because that fixed those couple of needles. And that was the ones we used today, the, the needle that the green was on and the needle that the um, orange was on were the ones that were giving me trouble. Um, so those are the ones that using this little gauge really helped me turn the dials just right um, so that everything stitched out beautifully. Uh, Y'all learned about the my, fav my new favorite stabilizer. <laughs> um, I'm wondering, it says it's best for performance shirts, moisture wicking material with extress, excessive stretch and fabric. Um, don't stretch the garment. I'm wondering how this would work with um, my knit cotton. So I might experiment with that and see if I like that more than my poly mesh. No show. We'll see. But I think that's everything for today. I hope you learned some stuff. And even if you don't have a free arm machine, I hope the going over all the placement and how, you know, you can use tools like this um, to help you figure out right where your logo should fall on your shirt. It's all going to depend on the size shirt um, and the style, I would say. But the most important thing is to like look at the collar and go straight down. And that's where the middle of your design should be. So, and then just how far down you go depends on the size of the shirt. Um, so, you know, the larger the shirt, the, the more inches you're going to go down. But those kind of tools are really helpful. And I hope that helps you. All right. So thank you, everyone. Yay. Sharon's first experience. Great. Yay. I'm so glad. So if you have any questions about anything, and especially if you're watching the replay, you can ask those questions in the comments section now under the video. Um, you can also always um, find me in my uh, Facebook group. Um, we have a Facebook group, um, a general one for anyone that was interested in joining. We talk about all kinds of good stuff in there. Um, and I think I have a link for it down below. And you can always email me too. I think I have my email here. Yeah, at hello at carlybell.com. If you have any specific questions, especially like if you're thinking about investing in a big machine um, or this, you know, hooping station, that's an investment and you want to talk to me before you get it, please let me know. I am uh, an affiliate for a lot of these companies, so it really does help me if you uh, purchase things through my links or um, or with Sewing Machines Plus. Um, I have a salesperson there that helps me, Jean. Um, so it really does help me, my channel, my family. <laughs> a lot when you purchase these, um, all these kinds of things through my affiliate links. So just want to say thank you in advance for that. And that's it. I do have, I finally have it. I have a friend, um, not, uh, okay. So a lot of y'all hear me refer to Carol. Carol Broom, um, has been, I mean this, and this is another Carol. This is Carol just to stuff. No, I'm going to say it wrong. Um, but so I have my two friend Carols, <laughs> Carol with a C and Carol with a K. Carol with a K has offered to help me with planning because I am not good at planning. And after one nice conversation with Carol, we have sip and stitches and VIP squad classes planned through the summer. So I'm very excited to tell you that because usually I'm like thinking of things the week before we're supposed to have a video. So I can tell you what April's Sip and Stitch is going to be, and I'm really excited about it. I still got to go get the supplies, but what we're going to do is, um, you know, the pretty boxwood wreaths you've been seeing? Have you seen the pretty sashes that go on the boxwood wreaths? We're going to be embroidering a sash and putting a wreath together, and it can be for you, but I think it also make a nice Mother's Day gift. Um, so that is what we're going to be working on in April. It's going to be on the 19th. I think it's the third Friday of the month, same time, 1030 um, Central Standard Time or 1130 Eastern. Um, and we're going to be embroidering the sash. I haven't figured out what machine we're going to stitch it on, but that project can be made on any machine. The, the design is probably going to be four by four. So you even if you have a four by four flatbed machine, you can make that project. You know, same with today's project. You can do this on a four by four flatbed machine. You just have to you know, use some tools to get your placement right and hoop everything right. Um, but yes, the boxwood wreath with the sash. I'm very excited about it. Um, that is going to be April's. And then I'm super excited about our March um, 
VIP Zoom class is happening in a couple weeks. And it's kind of a two month, we're doing a little series. It's going to take two months to put together, but we're going to be making some quote blocks in the hoop and then turning that into a bench pillow or a a placemat for your table, like a, a table runner. That's what I mean. Um, so super excited about that. That class is, when is that? Like the 27th is our VIP class. Oh, and I also want to tell you next week, um, March 21st at 12 o'clock Central Time, 10 o'clock Pacific Time, I'm going to be on Sewing Machines Plus Live with my friend Blaine. And I'm going to be telling you all about my print moda a fabric printer from Brother, which I've been having a lot of fun with because I printed all the fabric that we're using for this project. Let me show you. So I'm going to be telling you all the fun stuff with a fabric printer. So I have, these are all the fabrics that I'm going to make that bench pillow I was telling you about with. And so I printed all of it, but look how pretty it is. So, and I printed just what I need for my quote block. That's all I need of that fabric but I can print yards of fabric if I want to on that machine. But I'll be on Sew Machines Plus Live next Thursday. I already lost the date, April, no, May, no, March, <laughs> March 21st. So y'all come join me over there. We'll be on their YouTube channel and their Facebook page, but I'll post about it and write it in my email newsletter. All right, okay. All right, so that's it for today. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, I, I wouldn't be a youth, good YouTuber if I didn't tell you, please give this video a thumbs up <laughs> or a like on Facebook. Uh, I really appreciate y'all. And if, um, if you're not already subscribed, please consider subscribing. On YouTube, you'll get, uh, I think if you hit the little bell button, you'll get notified when I go live in case, um, you know, sometimes I do spontaneous ones or anytime I release a new video, you'll get a notification and know what's happening. And I think the same thing on Facebook. If you follow me on Facebook, um, you'll get notified when I go live. OK, but that's when that's where I put all my stuff out in the email newsletter. So thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate y'all. I hope you have a great rest of your weekend and I will see y'all next time. Bye, guys.